uh, Senator Cotton. Mr. Chairman, and thank you, gentlemen. Admiral Richardson, I want to discuss the littoral combat ship in my view is some concerning news. According to a U.S. Naval Institute story published this week, the Navy will not deploy an LCS in 2018. Eleven LCS ships have been delivered to the Navy as today, but we will have none deploy. Two days ago at a Sea Power hearing, Admiral Mertz testified, quote, the typical deployment model is three to five ships to one to keep one deployed. So this is really just math. There's going to be gaps that will fill in over time. We're not concerned about that, end quote. Um, however, in September, just eight months ago, the commander of Naval Surface Forces in the Pacific Fleet said that you can maintain three to four littoral combat ships deployed when you take on the blue gold crew system. What is the answer here to the actual deployment ratio? So I'll tell you, uh, as you know, the littoral combat ship has been a, a program that has been through some troubled times. And uh, I would say that in the past, we probably pushed that <laughs> ship out forward, deployed a little bit ahead of its time before the system, the, the program had stabilized and we'd done the appropriate testing and, and gained the confidence. Uh, as soon as I got in as the Chief of Naval Operations, I directed the Commander of Naval Surface Forces to take a look at that program, rationalize it, and uh, make it look a, a lot more like a normal ship building program and a ship uh, uh, operating program. So this is what led to changes in the maintenance uh, approach, changes in the blue gold crewing, uh, the, the way that we are going to uh, home port these uh, squadrons and forward deploy them. 2018 is really a reflection of that shift. And so it is, it, starting in 2019, we're gonna start forward deploying those. They'll be sustainable. They'll be more lethal by virtue of the enhancements we're putting on those littoral combat ships. We have 24 deployments uh, planned between 19 and 24. And so you know, it, it really, 18 is a, is a reset year to get maintenance and manning uh, in place so that we can deploy Wait, this in a sustainable so, fashion. So starting in 2019 then, which of those ratios will be correct? Will we be able to keep three out of four ships deployed or one-fifth to one-third of those ships deployed? Sir, I'll tell you what, there's a little bit more to the math. If I could get back to you for the record on exactly how that ratio works out, I'll be happy to show you the, the way this all manifests I would, itself. I would appreciate that yes, for the record. There's a second question I want to ask as well. Even by Admiral Mertz's statement, of one-fifth to one-third uh, of ships deployed, we should still have two or three LCS ships deployed this year. I think you may have just answered that question, though, by saying this is a reset year to try to get yes, to your future model. This, this is part of that plan that uh, Surface Force has put together. We spent $6 billion now on these ships. I think the taxpayer deserves to have them out performing their job. Could not agree more. With I hope us. that's the case starting next year. Um, General Neller, I want to speak to you uh, about some changes in foot march standards at the inf infantry officer course. It was recently changed from requiring uh, infantry officers to pass five out of six evaluated foot marches to only three evaluated foot marches. Um, I find that a little worrisome um, given that the overall physical fitness testing standards have increased for everyone to include enlisted Marines which means we may be lowering standards for our infantry leaders compared to our enlisted Marines on something that is, I would say, a pretty core competency for an infantry leader. I assume you would agree with that? Well, Senator, there was a change because we, we looked back at, the, at what was going on at Infantry Officer Corps. Um, there's nine foot moves during the course of that curriculum. At one time, there were you had to pass five of six to graduate. A couple of those six, we could not relate them to events in the training and requirements manual for infantry. So I got a group of my senior infantry leaders together and I said, okay, you know, why are we doing what we're doing? A couple of them, the one in particular, a, a, uh, an event, I thought that the load was, I, didn't, I wouldn't think I would ever have anybody do that. So they came back to me and they said, look, these are the three that equate we're still doing all of them. They're still all done. They're all still part of the overall but but, evaluation. But fewer, fewer are being evaluated. They're all evaluated. We're evaluated as a They're graduate. all evaluated and overall as the performance of that officer to, to graduate from that course. But three, three of three now, to include the, the one with the set heaviest load and the time and duration, 
those three all have to be passed in order for an officer to, to graduate from that course. Let me just read you a statement from General Bohm, the commanding officer of the Marine Corps Training Command. He said, quote, the principal driver behind us making modification of the course, it was not about lowering attrition, it was about making students more successful to compete, complete the course. I don't really understand the difference between lowering attrition and making students more successful to complete the course. Both of those sound like you're tailoring the standards not to the mission but to the graduation rates that you have at the course. I'm not going to speak for General Bohm, but my view is when I was, appro when I was approached with this, so this is what we can equate to training and requirements manual for the infantry. These are the three that we should evaluate as, as go or no go for graduating from the course, and that's what we did. Thank you. My time's expired.